Okay, so bank reconciliation. Um, yesterday we have talked about cash, uh, petty cash fund, which related to uh, cash fund items. This time we're going to focus on bank reconciliation, which is associated with uh, cash in bank uh, items, which is a cash item. Now for our focus points for this discussion, we have to discuss basic concepts related to bank reconciliation, then the bank reconciling items, then apply the concept of the bank reconciliation methods when pre preparing for uh, bank reconciliation statements. Then along the discussion, we're going to solve sample problems. Before we go through with our uh, core discussion for bank reconciliation, let us define first cash in bank. Cash in bank as part of cash assets of an entity. It is the portion of a company's total cash that have been deposited in banks and other financial institutions. There are two uh, samples of demand deposit accounts or cash in bank accounts. We have their savings and checking accounts. Checking uh, savings accounts, they are usually uh, for safekeeping purposes as part of management control over its total cash. Then for checking accounts uh, relates to the charge, the account to, wherein to charge the check being drawn and issued to payees. Okay, the control on depositing cash, uh, dep depositing cash collections to the bank follows the general accounting assumption for cash control, we have there yung impress system that I have mentioned to you during our discussion with uh, Petty Cash Fund. Though Petty Cash Fund sa in, somewhat, uh, in one way or another follows the impress system, uh, impress system provides that all cash collections or cash receipts should be deposited intact in the bank and all cash disbursements should be made through issuance of checks. Now, how do we relate it with bank reconciliation? Uh, it is really uh, related to bank reconciliation because it focuses on the deposit side, wherein we deposit our account, uh, our cash to our cash in bank accounts. So again, there are only major uh, bank accounts that we know, savings and checkings. Although under cash, and, uh, cash equivalents, we have mentioned of Time deposit. A time deposit is also in the form of bank accounts, but for this purpose, we're going to follow lang demand deposit. Okay. To understand more of uh, later for the core discussion, setting uh, cash and cash equivalents, particularly on the reconciling items, we have to understand the depositor and bank relationship okay so what we're going to focus here is the perspective of both depositor and bank when it comes to the deposited cash okay. on the part of the depositor the depositor recognizes an asset when we deposit or an entity deposited an amount to the bank of course the depositor <clears throat> recognizes an asset on the books or on its own records, and um, it is asset on our part. It is asset on our part. We have a control over that asset, although that asset is not in our possession. We have control because anytime we can still withdraw that cash from that bank. Now, on the, our part, it is an asset again. As an asset, the normal balance is debit. So in order for us to increase our asset in the perspective of the depositor we debit the asset okay we debit the asset we debit the account in order to decrease we credit the account but it, it is a different perspective when it comes to bank that cash deposit that the bank receives from the depositor the perspective of the bank is more of a liability okay being a liability because uh, the bank recognizes an obligation for the safekeeping if it is merely for safe savings and 
also for the obligation to return such bank a uh, cash deposit when it comes uh, when the depositor uh, withdraw that cash okay, upon demand. So on the part of the bank, it is a liability. Being a liability, normal balance is credit. Okay, so to increase our cash balance in the bank, the bank credits our account. Okay, the bank credits our account. While to decrease the balance in our in our account, the bank, the bank debits. Okay, different perspective. Nagi gets. Kaya di reason kung na nahabol ako don. Okay. Um, what I'm what I'm referring here is nire-relate ko siya. I am relating it actually dun sa uh, basic accounting equation and the relationship of the elements of FS, particularly on the asset and liability side. Okay? But we are incorporating it here in the depositor and bank relationship in order for us later on to further understand how to treat each reconciling items. So again, on the part of the depositor, it is an asset. On the part of the bank, it is a liability. Okay? So another example, on the on uh, on my perspective, on my part, example sa akin, I have a bank account because of a payroll. When you become an employee in the near future, you will be required to uh, to enroll for a for a payroll account. Actually, it's just a a regular a special account, okay? Other than the regular account that is being enrolled in a bank, that payroll account that will be used for the salaries payroll okay when the company uh pays for salaries the management will say the salary had been credited to your account therefore in order to understand the term credited when we check our uh, bank account there is an increase in the balance of our uh, payroll account that means uh the bank to increase our cash balance the bank credits our account but on the perspective of us if we're going to uh, uh to record the increase in our books as a depositor the increase in that bank account is not a credit but a debit on our side we debit our record a bank a bank account record in our books but the bank itself credits our account well when we while when we withdraw that cash from the bank the bank debits while on our part we credit that account okay i hope na gets talaga ko dun, ha? so being a different uh perspective a point of view the point of view point of view of the depositor and the point of view of the the bank both will maintain their own records. Okay? We cannot avoid discrepancy on recording and timing differences on the transactions that involve the deposit or the bank account. Now, the depositor will maintain own records while the bank will maintain own records. In one way or another, talaga hindi mag equal yan at some point. Okay? But the purpose of bank reconciliation through the reconciling items that we're going to discuss later is to um, adjust the respective records in order to come up with an equal amount. Diyan papasok ang concept ng bank reconciliation. Okay? So in order for us to uh, adjust in equal points or in equal amounts our uh, the records, our records as depositor with the records that provided by the bank, we have to apply the concept of bank reconciliation so bank reconciliation means putting into agreement or in equal amounts the balance of cash per depositor's record as represented by the ledger okay i hope you're familiar with ledger and the per uh, per bank records which is actually uh provided through yung tinatawag na monthly bank statement 
Bank reconciliation is done by recon, uh, by reconciling the records of the depositor and and the bank statement with the corresponding reconciling items. Uh, usually, bank reconciliation is prepared on a monthly basis by the depositor's accountant. Okay? When asked in the theories or parang ano, tawag doon, baka identification or multiple choice question, you will be asked who prepares the bank reconciliation statement. It is not the bank who prepares the bank reconciliation. It is us, the company, specifically the depositor's accountant. Siya yung gumagawa. Or in the absence of an accountant, any of the uh, finance officer. Okay? Yan yung gumagawa ng bank reconciliation. Again, the purpose is to uh, meet halfway or to put into agreement the balance per depositor record and the bank record. Why is it that the preparation of the bank reconciliation is on a monthly basis? Because we are dependent on the so-called uh, bank statement. Bank statement it, um, is a monthly report of the bank that shows all the changes or movement in the balance of that bank account. Everything else from the initial deposit, a subsequent deposit, and uh, ano, withdraw ones. Okay? So bank statement, it is an important document for us in order to prepare the bank reconciliation statement. Okay? Monthly basis. Now, uh, I know, I, I, I'm not sure if you are familiar with a bank statement. Maybe you can ask with uh, from your family members, like your parents or your brothers or sisters, na merong ano, uh, bank accounts. For example, on my part, I have a, I have a, I have a bank account. I downloaded uh, an app for uh, related to my bank. Now that bank application, meron siyang ano, update. The update there was uh, referring to the access, uh, immediate. Ano, immediate access of uh, ito, bank statement. So anytime, anytime I can generate or download the bank statement for a certain bank. So yun yung parang, ano, I'm, not, I'm not advertising but yung BPI, yun yung naging update sa kanilang application, mobile application. So anytime I can download the bank statement. There in the bank statement, I can determine other than my uh, other than the credit and the salaries, what are those items that uh, cost to increase the balance of my payroll account. Parang ganon yung purpose ng bank statement. Okay? It is a monthly report. The same goes with the big businesses. The businesses, in order for them to determine the balance of their account or bank records, they ask for the bank reports the so-called bank statement. The next, the reconciling items. Reconciling items are those items by the name themselves uh, provides reconciling effect when we are adjusting the balance of both records, depositors and bank records. Two main classification of our reconciling items, we have the book and bank reconciling items. So each records will have different reconciling items. Okay? Reconciling items for the book, we have credit memos, debit memos, and book errors. So let us discuss these three reconciling items for the book. In relation to the earlier discussed depositors, the depositor and bank relationship. Okay? Bakit ko in-emphasize yung relationship na yun? More specifically sa portion ni 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 bank na merong ano na the, the increase in the in the depositors account the increase is in the form of a credit while the decrease is in the form of a debit is because of the so called yan mga credit memos and debit memos credit memos are already are items already been recorded by the bank as addition or increase in our account okay the record of the bank with those credit memos, immediate recording of those credit memos, merong delay on the part of the depositor. Since the bank is the one uh, 
directly engage in the recording of those credit memos in order for the bank to notify the the, tawag nito, the depositor of the credit memos, the bank prepared the bank statement. So before the depositor will be able to know that there is a, a collection of accounts receivable, the crediting of a third time deposit, the crediting of cash proceeds from a loan, okay? uh, the depositor will only know if the bank provides such bank statement. Until such time, hindi muna siya uh, makakapag-record ng mga transactions na yan. Okay? So examples again, accounts and notes receivable collected. Especially if there are, uh, if the bank is authorized to collect such accounts and notes receivable on behalf of the depositor, uh, the bank will immediately records and credit it to the depositor's account. Since the depositor is... Uh, engage in many transactions from day-to-day -day basis na operation niya, hindi na, ang tawag nito, hindi na medyo na focus yung transactions with the bank. So sometimes, immediate crediting na lang ng bank, then later on, to, not, to notify the depositor, it, uh, the bank notifies through the bank statement. Also, we have matured time deposit. Uh, going back with the concept of cash equivalents, Time deposit is actually in the form of, uh, of a bank account but classified as cash equivalent. Now, in relation to bank reconciliation, uh, having maturity period, uh, having maturity period, uh, within that maturity kasi parang nawawala sa isip ni depositor na merong time deposit. Upon maturity of the time deposit, uh, immediately, based on their agreement, na sabi na natin there is an agreement between the depositor and the bank that upon maturity of the, uh, the time deposit, directly crediting na lang dun sa account ng depositor. Now, upon maturity, hindi naman pinapansin na yan ni, ni depositor. Again, because of the day-to-day -day operations niya, yung ginagawa na lang, the bank notifies the creditor of the credit, uh, I mean, the, the, deposit, the depositor of the crediting of time deposit through the bank statement. Kasi makikita naman dun sa bank statement that there is a credit of the amount of time deposit. Okay? Same goes with cash proceeds from loan. Especially if uh, an entity is borrowing funds from the bank okay? and the entity is having trouble with cash management, yung ginagawa na lang is to credit the uh, cash proceeds to the uh, deposit account of the depositor. Okay? Take note again, credit memos are addition or increase. Okay? So, credit siya ng bank. Kaya nga, yung uh, deposits and other items na that results or with an increased effect in the balance of the account of the depositor, the bank always credit the account in order to increase or add the, ba uh, the balance. Okay? In order to increase the balance. Take note, credit memos are book reconciling items. They are, they are addition or increase. Nuggets? Hilary San, gonna have all? Kahit hmm? little me lang ha, kung mabilis akong nagsasalita. Okay, next. We have debit memos. Debit memos, by the name itself, kabalik taran siya ng credit memos. These are items already been recorded by the bank as deduction or decrease in the cash balance in our account. Now, debit memos, again, deduction siya, decrease. Uh, yung mga decrease na yan, uh, immediately na -re record by the bank, but the depositor, there's a timing difference in the recording in the depositor's books. Examples of those debit memos, actually they are referring to um, additional payments or charges. Example, your bank service charge. Then we also have the no sufficient fund check or NSF check. 
By the way, other uh, related terminologies for NSF check, we have dive check and DAO check. So bank service charge, example of a transaction that involves service charges when you or uh, when an entity makes some um, online transfer, online banking uh, transactions. For example, payment through online apps. For example, the bank paid for nagbabayad na paid for uh, a liability online transfer for am amounting to 2,500 okay for 2,500 the bank will deduct the 2,500 and other than the 2,500 the bank will deduct an additional amount so called service charges for example on my part uh, per experience, when I made bank transfer, I uh, yung babayaran ko is two thousand five hundred, for example. But what was deducted a total of two two thousand five hundred twenty five. Ganon. So therefore, the twenty five thousand difference or adi additional amount is ano a service charge. Okay. Another example is uh, transfer of fund from one bank from one bank to another bank. A okay, private bank to private bank, private bank to government bank, or basta ganon, transfer ganang ganon. Okay? For no sufficient fund checks, these are ano yung mga check na tawag nito, nire return. These are checks returned because of no sufficient funds. Close to that no sufficient fund is the insufficient fund check. Other than that, we have the drawn against unfunded deposit. More common yung daif and dao to uh, local terminologies daw. But for insufficient, uh, for no sufficient fund check, parang medyo foreign terminology siya. But other reference materials and other reference books gumagamit ng either NSF, daif, or dao. But then again, there are, there are examples of uh, debit memos. There are still other examples pa naman, like defective checks, mutilated checks. Basta as long as they, ano, they represent a debit or a decrease in the bank account. By the way, someone are raising hand. My concern, my question. Miss Kihano, my question ba? Ay na wala. Ako kayo talaga. Na imagine ko lang talaga kung face to face. Say lang, na worries. Na nalo lang ata. Okay, nag-gets ako doon sa ano, sa debit memos. Hindi reason kung na-date, nag-gets doon. Yeah. Okay. So next, we have book errors. Book errors are errors committed by the depositor self or himself. And uh, in recording amounts. So we have omission of amounts or omission of data, error in inputs of data, or mathematical or computational errors we can't avoid errors because of human errors yun nga, human errors we can't avoid that so when, when we have errors the, the remedy for errors we, we have to make adjustments we, we have to make uh, corrections okay next we have for bank reconciling items we have deposit in transit outstanding checks and bank errors for deposit in transit these are items of deposit already been recorded. This time, si deposito yung na nakapag-record na. Earlier, the book reconciling items, the one that had, uh, already had the records, the bank. But this time, for bank reconciling items, the one that already had the record is the depositor. 
di pa magkabalik tad a different perspective okay but hear me out so deposit in transit are items of deposit already been recorded by the depositor as deposit but not by the bank because of certain a uh, certain uh nito, scenarios for example the usual uh usual banking practice the operation ends commonly 3 p.m. sometimes 2 p.m. so sabi na lang natin 3 p.m. Okay. when the bank closes 3 p.m. that means uh, no additional transaction with the bank that can happen beyond 3 p.m. but that doesn't mean the bank is no longer operating the bank is actually making clearing operations not the clearing operations na naglilinis guys yes, ha Okay, but we can relate it sa naglilinis, but what is being clear is the transaction, I mean, are the transactions for the day. So, for example, all deposits in the day, within the day and all disbursements or payments within the day, it must be cleared out so that no more trouble for the next uh, banking operation in the next, for the next day. Okay, so how does deposit in transit occur? When cash deposit, uh, when cash items are deposited but not reflected, one, due to bank cut-off time, okay? Especially when we are doing banking, uh, online banking or online transfer, like we deposit tayo through online transaction, uh, anytime we can deposit. But the bank, pag nag-close na siya, ng, uh, nag -cut, nag, uh, nagkaroon na siya ng cut-off time, na close na siya ng kanyang transaction with customers, yung nangyayari, that, that deposit that has been uh, in transit today will not be reflected as deposit today, but it will be reflected as a deposit tomorrow. Okay, so for example, nag-close nag 3pm, then you deposited through online 4pm na, ganun. Okay? The bank will not recognize it as a deposit today. It will recognize it as a deposit tomorrow. But that doesn't mean hindi yan na-receive ni bank. Na-receive yan. Pero hindi lang i-reflect sa bank statement today. Tomorrow pa. If daily yung bank statement. Parang ganun yung concept niya. Next, cash collections on hand awaiting to be deposited. So we cannot understand. Cash collections on hand, on hand pa, nasa possession pa namin, but awaiting to be deposited, classified siya as deposit in transit. Now, the explanation for the second item is that going back again with impressed system, following that all cash receipts or cash collections must be deposited in the bank, intact. Okay? If it is part of the company's cash control to deposit or ca all cash receipts to the bank, therefore, those cash collections that are awaiting to be deposited, they are already part of your deposit in transit, even though hindi pa siya na deposit. Okay? Take note of that, ha? Take note of that. Can you raise hand if nahabol ako sa deposit in transit? Sir? Yes? Sir? I would like to ask a question po, sir. Sige. Um, in whose perspective po ito sa depositor or sa bank? Bank. We're already talking with the bank. Ah, okay po, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, to further clarify, uh, yung may record na ng ating deposit, okay, as if deposit na si depositor. Na record na niya yan. The deposit in transit, na record na yan ni depositor. Okay? as deposit. But the bank, hindi pa niya na-record yan. So kay bank, in transit pa rin yan. Okay? Even though the bank already receives the deposit, the treatment is still in transit kasi nga, yun yung inabutan ng cut-off. Or kung hindi pa yan na-receive ni bank, nasa depositor pa rin yung uh, cash collections, deposit in transit na rin yan kasi nga, cash control ng isang depositor na deposit talaga yung kanyang uh, cash. Ayun nga lang, nakakaroon ng mga tawag nito, uh, hindrances or conditions na hindi talaga na-deposit agad. 
yung cash na yan. Kaya tawag sa kanya is deposit in transit. Okay? By the, yung, yung kanya, yung suffix niya, yung in transit. Okay? So next, we have outstanding checks. Outstanding checks are item of checks for payment. Okay? Uh, going back with impress system, all disbursements must be in the form of check issuance. Must be in the form of checks. So therefore, outstanding checks occur if the bank weren't able to clear all the checks issued for payment. Ibig sabihin lang ng outstanding checks, uncleared checks. Okay, uncleared checks. So examples of uncleared checks, these are checks uh, to be cleared by the bank for payment. So hindi pa siya cleared, to be cleared pa lang. Another are checks issued to customers not yet been presented for payment. Okay? Uh, when we issue kasi check, we notify the bank that this check numbers will be presented to you for uh, payment. So we have a list. We have a checklist. So later, we'll show you, uh, I will show you a sample problem that relates for deposit and transit and outstanding checks. So going back, notes for outstanding checks. Take nota, outstanding checks, they are uncleared checks. Uncleared checks, hindi pa na clear. Now, in relation to outstanding checks, uh, the outstanding checks must be I must exclude or should exclude checks that are mar marked, accepted, or certified. Sometimes uh, the bank receives checks that are already marked, accepted, or certified. When, um, when a check is marked, accepted, or certified, the payment is guaranteed on that check. So therefore, even though it is not yet cleared, it is as if good as paid. So therefore, that accepted or certified check must be deducted from the total outstanding checks. Okay? Take note ako for outstanding checks. Kailangan tignan if there are information related to accepted or certified checks. Because any information will matter. Okay? For purposes of bank reconciliation. Again, certified checks are good as paid. As payment are guaranteed. Bank errors. For bank errors, these are errors committed this time by the bank. Same perspective with the book errors. Examples of those, omission of amounts or data, error input, error on inputs of data, mathematical or computational errors. Okay? We cannot avoid human errors. Okay, the question now will be, where do we get those reconciling items? Alam na natin. We all know na mayroong mga reconciling items. Book, book and bank reconciling items. And the question is, where do we get those reconciling items? Now, to be specific, book reconciling items, credit memos and debit memos, the source of the source document that we're going to um, that we're going to uh, consider getting those reconciling items is the uh, monthly bank statement, the bank records through the monthly bank statement. So when the uh, when the bank issues or provides a, a monthly bank statement, that will be our basis for credit and debit for most. Ay, ano ba yan? Ay, manok. <laughs> Okay, going back. Next, we have bank reconciling items. For bank reconciling items, for bank reconciling items, we have deposit in transit and outstanding checks. The deposit in, in transit and outstanding checks, uh, we can find it through the depositor's own record by comparing with the monthly bank statement. So in order for us to determine kung meron bang deposit in transit, meron bang outstanding checks, we look to the, uh, we look into the records of the depositor, then compare it with the monthly bank statement. So take note, 
credit memos and debit memos na book reconciling item, we look it from uh, the bank record through the monthly bank statement. While the bank reconciling items and deposit in transit and outstanding check, we look for it from the depositor's own record by comparing it with the monthly bank statement. Okay? Then the book errors and bank errors, yung uh, nito, yung concept sa kanila is who committed the error will make the adjustment. So therefore, for book errors, it is literally the errors of the depositor. So we're going to look for the records of the depositor if there are any errors that will relate for our preparation of bank reconciliation statement. The same goes with bank errors. Bank errors will be reflected on the bank monthly bank statement. Okay? So titignan mo on the report of the bank kung nasan doon yung tama, kung meron ba doon tama or wala. Okay? Nagets ako doon? Can you raise hand if nagets ako doon? So kindly take note of that ha? because maybe in the future you might be, you might uh, be asked where where do we get those reconciling items? Okay? Kindly ano na lang? Yan. Remember that that uh, tabular presentation. Okay? In relation to the bank reconciling items, always take note that only, okay, ha? only the book reconciling items will have the adjusting entries on the books of the depository. So therefore, the bank reconciling items, you're not going to prepare an adjusting entries on those bank reconciling items. Let the bank make uh, or prepare those adjusting and uh, adjusting entries for the uh, reconciling items of the bank. Okay? Take note again, ha? Book reconciling items will require adjusting entries on the books of the depositor. So moving on with the bank reconciliation methods. Okay. Applying the concept of the bank reconciliation methods, at least we have three bank reconciliation methods. Adjusted, balance, book to bank, and bank to book. Among the three, I suggest to uh, familiarize or master the adjusted balance method. Because everything else from bank to book up to book, uh, yeah, book to bank, from bank, uh, from book to bank down to bank to book, the concept will be taken from the adjusted balance method. So later, we're going to apply it in a problem solving. And again, uh, among the three, the most common assumption um, uh, for discussion purposes is the adjusted balance method. Although in practice, especially in the audit side, book to bank or bank to book uh, will be applied also. Okay, but again, the most common is the adjusted balance method. So here it is. For adjusted balance method, the setup is to separately adjust the bank records and the book records. So there will be an adjustment column for the books, uh, book items. Then there will be an adjusted, adjusted adjustment column for the uh, bank records. Okay. You can have it this one or uh, other presentations in the reference materials. You will have it there. All reconciling items will be presented in one column, then two columns separately for book and bank. Parang ganon. Pero wala akong presentation na ganon eh. I suggest this one. Separate reconciliation. Now, um, at the end of the day, it should be balanced out. So therefore, the adjusted balance of the bank must be the same amount with the adjusted balance of the book. Now the question is, sir, what if, okay, what if everything else are accounted for, including errors? Ganun pa rin. Hindi pa rin nag-balance yung uh, bank and 
book records. Let us say bank have 1 million adjusted balance. Then the book had uh, 9 million, uh, 900, 990,000. Question, between bank and book records, where, uh, sino yung merong ano? Accurate records. Is it the depositor or the bank? Who holds the most accurate records? Is it the bank or the book? Based on your readings. Bank. Bank. Uy. Dami nang sagot ng, nagsagot ng bank. Okay, question. Why bank? Walang ganyan lang, sir. Okay, that is correct. That is correct, actually. The bank holds the most accurate accurate ano, uh, records than the book. Although there are instances in the uh, other reference materials, especially in the book-to-bank na method, sometimes we were going to assume na si book yung tama. Lalo na kapag sa problem solving, only the books have the complete records. But then again, if all are complete, okay, all are complete, and you are asked for the adjusted balance, follow the bank records. The bank holds the most accurate uh, records uh, in contrast with the book. Okay? So again, master the adjusted balance method because the foundation of the book to bank and bank to book will be taken from the adjusted balance method. So for book to bank, ganito yung presentation niya. Other reference materials, usually ganyan yung presentation. As you can see, uh, the, the, credit mem the credit memos and debit memos are uh, presented as is. So it is added for credit memos, it is deducted for debit memos. The same goes here with the book to bank. Since, since we are starting with the book items, Credit memos and debit memos will be uh, treated the same as that with adjusted balance method. Okay, errors will also do, uh, uh, be done the same. But starting with deposit in transit up to the errors of the bank, it will be treated inversely. So therefore, we're going to apply a reverse mathematical method. So here, deposit in transit is added and outstanding checks are deducted. This time, under book to bank, the deposit in transit is deducted and the outstanding checks added. Errors will de uh, depend on the scenario the, uh, wherein the error occurred. If the error is an addition, uh, has an addition effect, ililess siya dito. Okay? Kung dito addition yung kanyang effect, ililess naman siya dito. Pero kung dito, suggested balance method, deduction yung kanyang effect, dito naman i-add. Okay? Depende again ha si error. Depende si error. Pero si deposit in transit and sending check, apparent yung kanilang uh, reverse treatment. Kung mapapansin nyo. Right? Other presentation for this one, on my part, in order, uh, to avoid confusion, uh, especially if I am being asked with adjusted balance, what I'm doing is to insert adjusted balance after the errors committed by the and afterwards, apply inverse or reverse mathematical effect sa uh, bank reconciling items. Now, the goal of the book-to-bank presentation is to come up with the unadjusted bank balance. This unadjusted bank balance must be accurate with the amount presented in the bank statement. Nahabula ko doon. Okay, nahabula ko doon with adjusted balance method and book to bank. Okay, up to that point. Okay. Okay, so moving on.
we have bank to book. For bank to book, we start with the bank items, normal reconciliation with the bank items. Tignan nyo. Deposit in transit is added, outstanding check is deducted. Errors, depending on the errors, if it is if it has an addition effect or a deduction effect. But starting with the credit memos down to the errors committed by the book, you will apply now the reverse mathematical effect. The goal again this time is to have the unadjusted balance. This time for the book balance. The book balance, uh, the amount of book balance should equate okay, on the balance presented in the depositor's record. Okay, so this is the presentation again uh, from the book, uh, other reference materials or reference books. But for uh, my part, I will just insert adjusted balance after the errors committed by the bank. Then apply reverse mathematical effect on the, ba uh, the book reconciling index. Okay? So let us apply it in a problem solving. Ayan. Sabi dito, the high-speed company provided the following information to its accountant in relation to bank reconciliation, preparation of bank reconciliation for the month ended February 28, 2019. So cash per ledger and cash per bank statement, these are unadjusted balances. Cash per ledger, sometimes it is termed as book balance. While cash per bank statement, it is presented as bank balance. Again, these are unadjusted amounts. Okay, collections on notes credited by the bank, this is a credit memo. NSF check and bank service charge, these are debit memos. Deposit in transit and outstanding checks, these are uh, uh, bank reconciling items. Then we have errors committed. Okay, we have errors committed. For the books, we have collections amounting to 18,000 na reflect daw as 13,000. So kulang. Okay, kulang yung ating na recognize na addition as a uh, cash collection. Next, a check drawn for 6,100 was erroneously omitted by the company's accountant. So unintentional uh, omission of the 6,100, therefore, uh, kulang yung disbursement na record. Then for bank, a deposit of 23,000 was erroneously credited to low-speed company instead of crediting to high-speed company's account. Ibig sabihin, si high-speed made a deposit of 23,000. But instead of crediting to uh, the company's account, the bank credit it to low speed companies account so therefore we should make an adjustment uh, the bank should make an adjustment on this one but for purposes of uh bank reconciliation uh, this would be uh, an addition dun sa column ng bank next a bank service charge of 9900 was erroneously charged by the bank to average speed company instead of the company's account Meaning, this 9,900, this is a bank service charge against high speed. But what was done by the bank, it was charged against average speed company. So on the column of the bank, we, we will treat it as a, uh, a deduction error. Okay? So to prepare the bank reconciliation statement under adjusted balance method, we have it here. So for the book or for the high-speed records, adjusted book balance of 150,000, add credit memo of uh, re uh, referring to the note collection of 110,000, then deduct debit memos, we have NSF check and bank service charges, then add error on collection. Why add? Because instead of 18, 13 lang yung na records, so there is an additional of 5,000. Then less error on disbursement because omission of 6,100. So therefore, we have to deduct it here. So adjusted book balance is 253,100. So for the bank naman, starting from adjust, unadjusted balance of 120,000, 
add deposit in transit of 230,000. Then less outstanding checks of 110,000. Then adjustment for error on deposit, add 23,000 because it was accredited to low speed instead of high speed. Then error on payments, 9,900. Deduction since instead of deducting it to high, uh, from high speed, I deduct the by average speed. So adjusted bank balance is the same, 953,100. Okay, so equal naman. Now, nasundan ako dyan. Able to follow? Okay. O, di ba ang dali lang ng, adjust, na, ng ano, bank reconciliation? Sure. Okay, next. We have book to bank. For book to bank, as you can notice, we uh, started from adjusted book balance, normal reconciliation with the book items. Okay, down to the errors of the books. But starting with the deposit in transit, as you can see, here, deposit in transit is added, but this time, under book to bank, deducted na siya. Then, the standing checks, naka na siya instead of deduction. Then, the errors, dito na, dito na tayo mag-analyze ng maigi kay errors. The error on the deposit here is added. Okay? But because we are applying reverse mathematical effect, book to bank will have it deduction. Then error on the payment instead of addition will have it uh, instead of deduction will have it as an addition here under bank uh, under book to bank. Okay. Then upon the reconciliation, it is hundred twenty thousand, which is equal to the hundred twenty thousand here as unadjusted balance by the bank. Other presentation to this. We can add uh, information for the adjusted balance after the error on disbursement referring to the book. Okay? Then from the deposit in transit down to the error on payments, reverse mathematical treatment. Next, for bank, rec uh, for bank to book, start from the bank records, an adjusted balance of 120000 Normal reconciliation or, or as is mathematical effect from deposit in transit down to error on payments. So parang kinopya lang natin siya dun sa adjusted balance method. Then from collections down to error made by the book, reverse mathematical effect na. Okay? So dito naka-add siya, this time, ididida. Yung NSF check and bank service charge, Instead of deducting, naka-add na siya dito. Then yung errors, yung error in collection kanina na added, eh ito, 5,000, dinedact natin. Yung errors on disbursement na naka-deduct kanina, this time, ia-add naman natin. So, that should equate to an adjusted book balance of 150,000. Other presentation to this one, ganyan. Insert adjusted balance of 253,100, then from collections on notes down to errors, reverse mathematical effect. Were you able to follow? Okay. Okay. Next, we have the, adjusted, uh, the adjusting entries in relation again only to the book reconciling items. So, collection of the note by the bank, debit, cash, or cash in bank, credit notes receivable. For the NSF check, debit accounts receivable, credit cash or cash in bank. Let us assume accounts receivable. Then, uh, to record the service charge with debit bank service charge, this is treated as an expense. 
than credit, cash, or cash in bank. Then, uh, for the collections, adjustment on the collections, we debit cash or cash in bank, then credit accounts receivable, assume accounts receivable. Then to record for the adjustment on disbursement, debit assuming accounts payable, then credit cash or cash bank. Take note again, the only reconciling items that will require adjusting entries on the book of the depositor is or are um, book reconciling items. So I hope na gets dito sa, uh, sa adjusting entries. Okay, konti na lang. Last problem. Capslap Company. So, Capslap Company provided uh, the information for the month and the December, uh, September 30. Guys, correction lang ha. Dapat 30. 30 lang to hindi to 31. Wala pong 30 sa September. Pasensya na kasi medyo sabog na ako nung gumawa ako ng uh, PowerPoint presentation. Inaantok na ako niyan. <laughs> hindi ko na-edit masyado. Naglagpas ako ng 31. Parang ba yan nakakahiya? But nonetheless, Okay, we're provided with the following uh, documents. So we, we have Unity Bank Ledger and Caps Lock Company Statement. The requirements are September deposit in transit, outstanding checks, and adjusted balance for uh, the cash in bank account. Now before we proceed with the uh, requirements, let me ask you. Between the two documents, which of which is the depositor's record and which of which is the bank record? Sige nga. Brainstorm muna. Okay, between these two uh, between these two ano, um, records na meron tayo dito na nakapresent, Unity Bank Ledger at saka si Caps Lock Company Statement na document. Which of which is yung depositor's record at saan naman yung bank record? Mm. Mm, medyo parang merong ano. Ako, parang wala pang nakatama, wala pang may nakakorek. Ay, meron na pala, meron na. At, hindi ata. Ay, hindi pa, hindi pa, hindi pa. Wala pa pala, wala pa, wala pa. Ayun, ah, meron na. Okay, meron na. Okay, correct, correct, correct. Okay, meron na. So, answer reveal. Answer reveal tayo. So, yung Unity Bank Ledger, yan po yung depositor's record. And the Caps Lock Company Statement, yan po yung bank record. To be specific, Unity Bank Ledger, yan yung uh, ledger account ng cash-in bank ni Caps Lock Company. Yung Caps Lock Company Statement, yan po yung bank statement. So yun naka-correct, congratulations sa inyo. Okay. So now we proceed with the competition. Okay, the competition. 
guys, wag palito ha, wag kayo wag palito uh, sa ganyang presentation. In practice, yan yung ibibigay sa inyo. Basically, yan yung bibigay sa inyo. Okay, wag kalimutan. Yung parang T account na nakapresent dyan, yan yung ledger, depositors record yan. Tsaka yung isa naman, bank records. Although, if we're going to uh, reformat, or, or parang, you know, yeah, reformat si bank records, parang T-account din actually siya. Hindi nga lang nakapresent as T-account. Pero yan ha. So let's proceed with the competition for the deposit in transit and outstanding checks. Yan lang muna. Requirements 1 and 2 lang muna. So for requirement 1, our deposit in transit is 160,000. Kasi yan lang yung September deposit na hindi na-reflect sa bank statement. While the outstanding checks, we have the 902, 905, and 907 check numbers. So a total of 190,000. Sir, where did you get those information? Go back with the problem. So ganito yan. For, bank, uh, for deposit in transit, look for the information of the deposits. Okay, look for the information of the deposits. So from the ledger, we have three deposits. We have to match this one with the records of the bank. So the deposit of 100,000, hanapin dito, ito yan, reflected na sa deposit column. The 20,000 deposit reflected ulit dito sa deposit column ng bank statement. But the 160,000 hindi reflected because under the deposit column of the bank statement, what is provided, 60,000 na naka-CM, which is credit memo. Designation niya or, or description is note collection. Okay? So note collection siya. So hindi siya deposit. So therefore, 160,000 is correct as deposit in transit. Okay? Then next, we have the outstanding checks. Outstanding checks, focus naman tayo sa mga check numbers na nasa credit. Okay? The same thing. Match it with the bank statement. Nine, uh, 901 na 10,000, naka-reflect na rin dito sa check column, 10,000. 902, wala. Okay, wala 30,000. So tama na 30,000, part of outstanding checks. 903, 80,000, nandito na rin. So correct, na-reflected na siya. 904, Correct na rin, reflected sa checks column. 905, wala. So tama na outstanding check yung 60,000. 906, 50,000, eto yan. Na-reflect na rin. So okay na yan. The 907, 100,000, wala sa checks column. What we have on the checks column is the dive check na 4,000 debit memo. Okay? So, correct lang na 902, 905, and 907 yung outstanding checks natin for a total of 190,000. Nagets ako doon? Nagets? Take note guys ha, you might get, uh, you might encounter that in the future. In practice, at a minimum, yan yung gagawin niyo for bank reconciliation. You will be given with ledger and a bank statement. Then, prepare ka na ng bank reconciliation. Okay? Now, to answer the last requirement, yung adjusted balance will present it in a, uh, in, 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 yung sa, sa, ano, sa three reconciliation methods. So starting with the adjusted balance method, uh, by the way, by the way, yung unadjusted book balance natin, nakapresent dito 130,000. Yung unadjusted bank balance naman natin, we have it here, 216,000. So paano natin nakuha yung 130,000 book balance and 216,000 bank balance? Ganito lang yan, guys. Balik tayo sa problem. Okay. Get your calculator. Okay? Kunin yung calculators nyo. 
to arrive with 130,000 sa Unity Bank Ledger compare the total debits with the total credits. Total debits natin should have should have makano? Makano yung total debits? Makano? Makano guys? Hmm. Okay, correct. Tama naman lahat. 480,000. How about the de uh, the credit side? Magkano yung credit side? Kano? Okay, correct. 350,000. So compare 480 minus 350,000, we have 130,000. Nuggets? Any reason kung nahabol doon? Okay, next. Next naman, we have yung 216,000. What is presented under Caps Lock Company Statement? Nakalagay dyan, 216. Let us just check lang kung tama yung 216. So starting with the 200,000. Take note, 200,000. From 200,000, bawasan ng 10,000 the 901 check. That should be 190. Another deduction of 906 check na 50,000. Bawasan din ng 50, that would be 140. Then sa deposit naman, dagdagan siya ng 100. So that would be 240,000. Ang 240,000, bawasan naman siya ng 80,903 na check. So minus 80,000, magiging 160. From 160,000 sa deposit column, may, may 20,000, dagdagan, dagdagan siya, magiging 180,000. From 180,000, bawasan ulit ng 20,000 na nasa check column. Yung check number 904. So 20,000, babalik sa 160. From 160, meron daw credit memo na 60,000. So dagdagan siya ng 60,000, magiging 220,000. From 220,000, bawasan naman siya ng debit memo na 4,000, magiging 216 uh, or 216,000. Okay? Nagets? So advice guys sa advice ko, kindly check the balances. Okay? Huwag mo nang mag ano, huwag, huwag mo nang magpadalos-dalos sa competitions. Okay? Magpadalos-dalos na lang tayo sa ibang aspect, sa ibang aspeto, wag lang dito sa accounting. Kasi in one way or another, pag nagkamali sa simula, mali lahat. Iiyak ka talaga. Yan lang yung advice ko. So correct na yung ating 216 at saka yung 130,000. So proceed na tayo sa solution natin ng adjusted balance. So yung adjusted book balance 130,000, dagdagan lang ng note collection na 60,000 credit memo. At saka yung nag-iisang dive check na 4,000. O kitams, yung ating credit memo sa debit mem memos nasa bank statement natin kinuha. Diba? Kaling. So yan ha. So 186,000 yung adjusted balance sa book. Sa bank naman, 126,000 uh, I mean, 216,000 plus 160,000 and plus a uh, minus 190,000 
that would be adjusted bank balance then na 186,000. O kitams, nakita natin yung uh, ano ito? 160,000 tsaka yung 190,000 by comparing yung ledger sa bank statement. O diba? Na-apply natin yung concept. Hmm. So yan. Yan yung ating adjusted balance. Sa book naman, ganito yung presentation niya. Okay, ganito yung presentation. Or pwede naman, ganito naman yung gawin natin. Mag-insert lang tayo ng adjusted balance. Okay, yan yung ating bank to, a book to bank. Pwede ito or pwede ganito. For bank to book naman, ganito naman. Start from the bank. Ayan, ito yung presentation. Then proceed to the book balance. Or pwede naman, ganito rin. Okay, Mag-insert ng adjusted balance. So yan yung ating bank to book. Now for the adjusting entries, dalawa lang naman yung may adjusting entries natin. Yung note collection na 60,000 credit memo at saka yung DAIF na ni-return which is uh, 40,000, uh, 4,000. So sa note collection, debit ng cash or cash in bank, credit notes receivable, 60,000. Then DAIF check, debit accounts receivable and credit cash or cash in bank for 4 Okay. So I guess that's it for our bank reconciliation.